Hello viewers, welcome you all to our channel. In today's video, we are going to see how to prepare for AWS Developer Associate exam. So I have completed this exam few months back uh, and I will be walking you through the preparation steps for this exam. Uh, so let's go ahead into the video. So here I have given uh, some key points about this exam. So first let's know about this exam and then we can go ahead towards the preparation steps. So this is second complexity level exam in AWS landscape. So in case if you are not aware about the AWS certification path, I will be giving the link again in the description for AWS certification path. So it has three complexity levels. The first complexity is the foundation level and second complexity is the associate level and third complexity is the professional level. So this falls under the second complexity level. That's the associate level exam. Uh, yeah, I repeat uh, the detailed video on the AWS certification as well will be available in the description box or you can just uh, find it on top of this video. Fine. And then uh, it is recommended mainly for anyone with prior clouds, cloud hands-on knowledge or experience. So uh, what I mean is uh, it's not definitely not recommended for anyone to start straight away without any cloud uh, knowledge or without any knowledge about the on-premises data center. So it's definitely not for them. Uh, I would strongly recommend anyone who has not. So in case if you have not worked on those technologies, I would strongly recommend you to take the foundation level first and then go for this exam. Otherwise, you can straight away start this exam. So uh, in case if you have any prior clouds and uh, experience or knowledge, then go ahead for this exam straight away. It requires minimum preparation time up to three to six months approximately. So that's my time scale. Uh, might be you could be a fast grabber and then you can even uh, achieve it within two months of time. But what I found is um, um, among the normal uh, daily activities and if we allocate at least one to two hours per day uh, it, it requires a, almost close to three to six months because uh, this exam actually contains more hands-on uh, almost on every service you need to take hands-on before you appear for this exam so it's uh, highly essential to spend more time in the preparation uh, phase then majority of majority scenario based questions in the exam okay so unlike the foundation level here you will be tested almost 100 percentage i would say 98 or 100 percentage of the questions will be will be scenario based questions they will not be um, they will not be just a, a direct question okay so need to understand that the exam cost 150 us dollars or close to 11,000 INR. I think that that's excluding GST in case if you include GST as well that might exceed the actual exam cost. Then total question 65 and then total time 90 minutes minimum pass percentage 72 percentage. So here just to highlight currently all the AWS currently AWS exams are uh, completely based on scenario based questions and theoretical exams but AWS is working on the hands-on exams as well uh, we can soon expect them rolling out the hands-on exams for all the associate level I guess because actually the trial has been uh, done on the sysops uh, administrator exam uh, associate level and uh, they went for some beta exams in the recent past I think it's still ongoing uh, we can expect that to be rolled out even in this uh, level as well <laughs> no negative marks for wrong answer so that's one good thing you can actually attempt the questions even if you are not aware of the answers okay let's move on for the next one uh, okay so exam coverage uh, deployment you, you must know the deployment for, uh, 22 percentage of questions appears from the deployment and then 26 percentage from security, 30 percentage from development, 10 percentage from refactoring and 12 percentage from monitoring and troubleshooting. So 
<laughs> we'll i will cover all all of them in detail in the next paragraph what are the key services to be learned for this exam you need to understand one thing this is actually developer associate exam so most of the uh, questions will be focused on the uh, developer uh, perspective so uh, almost you may need to cover cover almost all the services in the compute um, if you look into the compute so starting from elastic bean stack Mm, actually uh, you can expect more questions from the elastic bean stack and elastic bean stack uh, deployment models so you will be tested on the blue green deployment all at once deployment so uh, questions will be framed like um, if you want to uh, deploy your application without any outage which deployment would you opt for or if you want to um, uh, deploy with minimal outage and uh, with cost optimization what would be your uh, deployment strategy so these type of questions you can expect in the exams uh, with respect to elastic bean stack then CACD pipeline um, so when you take CACD pipeline so I have actually listed down the services I think I have missed one more service uh, starting from code commit you uh, you must be having hands on almost on all the services code commit code deploy code pipeline and cloud formation as well i have missed that um, cloud formation in this but uh, you can expect questions from clouds of cloud formation i okay i have actually written it here uh, cloud formation as well and then ec2 so when it comes to ec2 you can actually uh, expect the questions at the intermediate level and then on top of ec2 you you must know ecs forget uh, that's container uh, service and then docker as well so um, when you take hands-on I would strongly recommend to take hands-on on elastic beanstack docker uh, ECS all of them together because actually they all fall under the compute area and it would be uh, making sense to take uh, hands-on on all of them all, all at once then serverless model with lambda <coughs> then uh, SAM that serverless application model uh, this is actually similar to cloud formation for serverless applications. SAM is cloud formation for serverless applications. So, uh, if you consider the compute side, you must cover almost all the services. Actually, it includes almost most of the services in the compute side. So, um, and I would strongly recommend you to take hands on on all the services don't go without hands-on on all the services because it's uh, highly essential to take hands-on uh, when it comes to this exam database uh, one interesting observation from my side is actually they don't uh, give you more questions from relational database when it comes to developer associate you will be tested more in the dynamo db space i do i won't say that you will not uh, find questions from rds but you can predominantly find more questions from the DynamoDB than RDS. Now that's something. Uh, so one suggestion from my side is before you appear for your exam, almost take, uh, I mean, almost be 100 percentage with respective DynamoDB. You must be aware of all the concepts in the DynamoDB right from uh, DAX and then uh, even on the uh, uh, DynamoDB streams uh, then uh, I, again I will be coming back to the DynamoDB um, performance improvements as well um, then okay so DynamoDB is one of the most essential service for this developer associate exam keep that in mind uh, then RDS yes I have as I have mentioned that's not as equal equally important as DynamoDB then uh, S3 so when it comes to S3, so uh, the reason why I have actually added uh, S3 into this is S3 is also like a key value pair uh, data storage. Okay, so that's the reason I have just put S3 in the database and you might be tested in uh, the advanced level when it comes to S3. Then uh, when it comes to security, you can find more questions on IAM basic and advanced level. When I say advanced level, you will be tested more on the uh, cross account sharing 
even on the policy uh, JSON format so you can expect questions on all those things and then you can e expect more questions on Cognito Cognito is one of the most important service when it comes to this exam so you will be tested on a, uh, both on Cognito user pools and uh, Cognito identity pools uh, so as I mentioned you need to take hands on on all these things then KMS key management service uh, before you appear for this exam uh, I can okay I reckon you can expect at least two to three questions on the encryption part when I say encryption part uh, you need to know client, ser client side encryption then server side encryption then server side uh, managed key encryption and then server, server side client key encryption there are various uh, types behind this encryption and you must be aware of all this uh, encryption types before you appear for the exam and also you must know the envelope encryption that's one of the most important concept for this exam uh, envelope encryption um, that come that comes in KMS uh, and then so uh, yeah I have already covered the encryption types then refactoring part as I mentioned elastic cache then DynamoDB provisioning you can expect questions on provisioning uh, so mathematical questions on the provisioning part for the DynamoDB uh, you will be uh, thrown with questions like you can expect 1000 reads and 500 writes per uh, second and uh, what would be the ideal uh, read capacity units and write capacity units use it for the DynamoDB mm. so th you can expect this sort of questions when it comes to refactoring and also you can expect more questions on the elastic cache uh, to improve the uh, database performance and then uh, on the monitoring side x-ray is one of the most important uh, concept you must understand x-ray um, really well before you appear for the exam and also you can expect questions on the headers uh, headers part or the metadata side that uh, you can uh, okay, expect in the x-ray and then cloud words and cloud rail as usual they are actually important concept for almost all the exams okay uh, so these are the key services to be learned for this exam uh, so by by the time you complete this exam I bet you you will be familiar with at least 50 to 60 percentage of the services in your AWS management console so you will be covering almost most of the uh, compute services which is uh, that itself gives you very clear picture about this exam right so now moving on to the next slide exam materials so actually i have uh, given to okay to set up i will be giving all these links in the description box as well uh, so actually i prepared i started my preparation with a cloud guru as usual uh, i always go for a cloud guru uh, materials uh, to start my preparation but i won't stick only with that material then i went on for the exam pros youtube course and i must say andrew's uh, course is actually doing an excellent work in this area mm, I, and you you will definitely find it useful when it comes to elastic beanstack because actually i have taken the elastic beanstack hands-on by watching his video and i still remember them um, really well because uh, the way he has taught the concepts and uh, even m m okay i can list out many concepts but uh, one uh, okay uh, in a nutshell i would say um, you can uh, definitely refer this example uh, youtube course uh, but i think there could be some uh, changes you can expect some changes with the recent exam pattern but not much at least this course will be uh, up to date at least 70 to 80 percentage and then Stephen Marek's uh, Udemy course actually I found Stephen Marek's Udemy course uh, to be most useful when it comes to solution architect exam but for the other exams I went for uh, a cloud guru exam pro and then I went for the Stephen Marx exam course apart from that I also um, used uh, Neil Davis and John Bonso's cheat sheets for the preparation I'll be giving the links in the description then exam materials uh, okay so these are the practice exam materials 
you need to be serious with these exams my first recommendation is john bonso's practice exam before you appear for any aws exam i would say go for john bonso's exam because <clears throat> the standard uh, with which the john bonso's exams are built they are almost equivalent to the aws actual exam so go for john bonso then go go for stephen marrick and then uh, go for neil davis exam ex as well actually uh, when i prepared for this exam i almost took 15 model question papers i i took 15 practice exams and uh, almost each of them i took twice or thrice so uh, before i appeared for this exam i almost uh, attempted 45 40 to 45 practice exams uh, and that helped me to score uh, good marks in this exam so repeat the practice exam multiple times until you score 90% in all of them so that's the key for success that's it from my side so i hope you might have found this uh, video useful please subscribe to our channel uh, that's a humble request from our side i'll be giving all the description i mean i will be giving all the links in the description box please uh, have a look and uh, reach me out for any questions Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you.